Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Juliana. Today I want to talk about certain high value habits that confident people, whether subconsciously or consciously, tend to practice. And I think building self-confidence is one of the most important things that you can do for yourself. Nowadays, I sometimes feel like the idea of confidence gets mistaken for arrogance or even narcissism. And I feel like this is kind of unfortunate because having confidence is so important if we want to achieve our goals and take the steps to bring about the life that we envision for ourselves. Someone who's confident knows that they're able to achieve what they set their mind to, even if they know they need to learn and grow to get there. There's this, I guess, deeper sense of trust that they can conquer their challenges. There's also a certain level of detachment confident people tend to have from the opinions of others. Of course, this doesn't mean that they won't accept constructive feedback, but I think confident people don't really wait on the external validation from others. And I think this trait of not clinging to external approval is really what makes confident people so magnetic. So my first habit, and pretty much all these habits relate to your day-to-day -day routines. You want to have certain non-negotiable tasks that you achieve each day. It doesn't really matter what these tasks are. I mean, they should generally be for the purpose of self-care or self-improvement. But the key is to make them small and manageable. And I mean smaller than you think you can handle. Keeping these habits small will be super important for consistency. Because I mean, it's so easy for life to happen and for things to get so overwhelming. So we tend to cut out things that we don't feel like we have time for. And the main purpose of these habits, while they will provide some benefit in themselves, is mainly to make us feel, I guess, accomplished throughout the day. And having these small achievements is especially important when you fall into a rut and just feel like your productivity is just not there. So no matter what, you still have this foundational routine that you can use to ground yourself. And like I said, this can really be anything. This can be like keeping your room and surroundings clean, or drinking a certain amount of water per day. You could also do things like take a 10 minute walk each day, or read 5 pages of a book. For me, it's to do my ab workout. It's only 5 minutes, and I do it right when I get up. And you might be thinking, well, why only 5 minutes? Why not 20 minutes so you can see better results? But we need to remember what we're going for here is really sustainability. And it's only because this routine is so short that I've been able to keep it in my routine since I started it in 2020. I mean, let's be honest, app workouts are not really that fun or exciting, but knowing that it only takes five minutes makes it way harder for me to tell myself that I don't have time for it. And also, getting it done first thing in the morning always gives me this sense of accomplishment. So yeah, these small habits really help to boost our self-esteem and therefore our confidence because we're proving to ourselves that we can consistently show up for ourselves. My next tip relates to personal grooming and it's to only choose clothes that our best self would wear. Our clothes, just like all of our other possessions, are ultimately an extension of our self and our mental state. So how you feel about yourself is going to affect what kind of clothes you choose. But this actually works in reverse as well. So if we choose clothing that represents who we aspire to be, that will actually have a tangible effect on how we see ourselves. And I think this is so powerful because we kind of have the ability to select the persona that we want and apply it to our appearance. And I think this habit is especially important if we don't yet feel like our desired, most confident self yet. But by wearing clothes that do channel this confidence, we can start to see ourselves more in this desire state. And yeah, it's ultimately about changing your self-concept. Once you do that, you will subconsciously start to take actions in your life that will reflect this new higher self. And dressing well, I think, signals to your brain that you are your highest self already. So definitely give it a try. I mean, worst case scenario, you just end up looking really good. Now, this doesn't mean that you should just go on a giant shopping spree or the more clothes, the better. Oftentimes, having a higher respect for yourself means buying clothes that you actually like and will realistically wear many times over. And this should mean owning pieces that are higher quality, even if you have less of them. To properly employ your wardrobe as a tool for confidence, you need to identify exactly how you want to feel in your outfits. In other words, what does confidence look like on you? Do you want to act more assertive, more sexy, more outgoing, etc.? All of these will warrant different styling choices. But I mean, dressing confidently doesn't mean you have to be in suits or tight dresses all day. Say if you want to be more successful in the workplace, I'm not really advocating that you should wear a pantsuit to go work out or when you're trying to go to sleep. What I do recommend though is that no matter the occasion, your clothing pieces should flatter you and make you feel good. So this means letting go of any clothes that have holes or stains and generally decluttering your closet from clothes that just don't really flatter you or your body type. Before we keep going on these tips, 
tips, I think it's the perfect time to introduce the sponsor for our video, Lily Silk. You guys, I am so excited to be working with them because I feel like their brand is what a lot of my channel is all about. They focus on providing investment clothing pieces that are luxurious yet still affordable. And they were so kind to send some of their pieces to try on for you guys. The top that I've been wearing throughout this video is their evening watershine top, and I feel like such a princess in it. This silk material is divine and is honestly so flattering. Let me ask you to the side so you can see the try on. Another piece that they sent me are their Dolce Vita trousers, which I absolutely love. As you can see, they're this really light, flattering gray shade that would be perfect for spring. And they seem like the perfect staple trousers because they're super elegant yet still practical. Something that I'm definitely going to be wearing this spring and summer is their amaranth skirt. This skirt is made of silk and is super flowy, and honestly, it's going to match so well with the rest of my closet because this is really nice, pearlescent ivory shade. I've been trying to lean more into, I guess, more old money styles, so this tailored blazer is the ultimate staple. I think their clothing is perfect for so many occasions where you want to feel elevated yet still functional. And yeah, they've been so kind to give us a code for 20% off. So here it is, just use the code LEE20 at checkout to get 20% off your order. I'll also have links to all the pieces in the description. So thank you again Lily Silk for sponsoring this video and thank you guys so much for helping to grow my channel and giving me so much support. Alright, my next tip is to pursue hobbies or activities where you actively grow. I think trying out new hobbies is really great because it brought broadens your horizons on what you thought you could achieve. And this is especially true for more, I'd say, like active or artistic pursuits that you wouldn't really encounter in your day-to-day -day life. But yeah, the real purpose here is not so you can just brag about a new skill, but rather it's so you can enjoy the benefits of progress and growth that a new activity will naturally bring. You can really help to, I guess, cultivate your confidence by growing your skills and expanding your knowledge. These sorts of hobbies are also great because it's sort of a safe space to make mistakes. And I think building up this area of our confidence is super important if you feel like the fear of rejection or fear of failure is kind of holding you back in your career or your relationships. So for example, say that you're taking a cooking class and you found that you overcooked the pasta that you were making. It's a great thing to see that when you overcook your pasta, you realize it doesn't really affect your livelihood or self-worth. And especially since in most classes or clubs that you go to, you often don't really know the other people. I mean, it shouldn't matter what people think, but it really won't matter what these people think because you'll never see them again. So in this way, it's really great to kind of see the mistake for what it was and move forward knowing that next time all you have to do is cook the pasta for a little shorter. So yeah, hobbies are a great way to see that our mistakes are not really personal shortcomings. They're just valuable lessons that we can use as feedback to improve in the future. All right, that's all I have for you guys for this video. Again, a huge thank you to Lily Silk for sponsoring this video. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram and TikTok. I do a lot of style tips, style advice, and like fashion content on there. And as always, please let me know what kinds of uh, video topics you'd like to see next. I'm always open to your suggestions. But yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!